Good afternoon. Somehow I thought that song would make me feel like Tom Cruise, but it did not. Um, so, um, welcome. I I'm excited that you're here. Uh, I want you to think about yourself for a second. Uh, I guess guys, you're used to that. Women, try to think about yourself for a second. What, what's something you want to change? You know, you've probably been hearing it all day now. Um, you know, do I want to lose 15 pounds? Do I want to pick up a new hobby, learn to play the guitar? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we all want to change something probably, and we want to improve. And I think that's because it's in our nature that we want growth. And so growth is really one of the things that we are, are trying to attain whenever we're, um, we're moving forward. So again, to introduce me, myself, but I am Kurt Kendall. Um, I am the, I'm the professor and chair at uh, Anderson University. And I am excited for this because it's about movement. And so as a physical therapist, movement is really foundational to everything that we do. Uh, and at the end of the day, it really is what stimulates growth. I feel like growth is just a, a natural uh, biological process for all of us, but it, it, it excites us so much. You can't run into a small child and say, boy, you've grown so much and not see them beam with pride. They're probably keeping track of it somewhere on a wall uh, on their home. Uh, but it's not just about vertical height, right? I was in the, the gym the other day and I noticed an individual, a, a teenager doing some bicep curls I don't have to tell you it was a male because you know that. And they would regularly go over to the mirror and check for growth. <clears throat> but growth isn't just physical. You'll run into couples and they'll talk about the growth that they've been experiencing in their relationships. Uh, you'll hear coaches talk about the growth that their team has been undergoing lately. And so growth takes so many forms and it, and it begs the question, what causes growth? What, what contributes to growth? Well, again, I teach uh, physical therapy, and so one of my courses is therapeutic exercise. And so therapeutic exercise is related to increasing strength and increasing growth. And the principle that we kind of really focus on is a, a principle called overload. You can probably imagine what overload means. It means loading more than what you're used to. So it's putting a load on the tissues, the, the muscles, the bones, the ligaments, more than what you get on an everyday basis. Here's a graph to try to help you to understand this. Uh, you can see that, you see that blue zone there? That's, that's homeostasis. That's what you do on an everyday basis. So you get up. You make yourself some coffee, maybe go downstairs, maybe uh, walk or drive to work, do a couple of uh, sit-to-stands throughout the day, come home. That's, that's homeostasis. It's comfortable. If you look at the gray zone, you see something called structural failure. What is that? Well, that is a load so great that it causes damage. This is you falling off of a 20-foot ladder onto the ground. Bones break, tendons rupture, muscles tear. That is not something we want. But look at the red line right in between. That is our overload. And so overload, what is actually going on is tissues are actually pulling apart, tearing microscopically. But once we remove that load, they actually build themselves back up stronger than what they were. We increase strength, in other words, growth. So to put this into, I guess, more regular words, we look at this and we say, this blue zone is essentially your comfort zone, is it not? It's what you're used to, it's what you like, it's what you enjoy. The gray zone is essentially danger. You avoid this at all costs and that's good. What, what's in between comfort and danger? Well, frankly, discomfort, right? It's unpleasant. You don't necessarily like this. So you have to mentally work to put yourself there. You have to go to the gym. You have to push yourself more than what would be typical. 
You might ask, what's the little beige area down in the corner? Well, that's laziness. And I'm not pointing fingers because, believe me, I'm going to talk about some things that I'm, I'm there with as well. But that's underloading, and underloading on tissues will actually cause a deterioration of them. It will actually cause them to start to wither away. So you're probably thinking like, oh my goodness, here we go. Another talk on, you know, that I'm not physically fit. Well, okay, that was a little bit. But <clears throat> I'm actually going to focus on something else, and that is I think our, our physical principle of this actually parallels us emotionally and relationally. And the reason I say that is because lately I have experienced this more than I ever have in my life. And so these, these steps that you see here are also patterned after how we interact with people and how we uh, are emotionally healthy. So you heard that in the opening. I've been accused in my household of being more emotionally invested in the Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> than my wife and two daughters. And to be brutally honest, it's true sometimes because the Steelers aren't that good sometimes. And so I get really worked up about it. <clears throat> well, now, it's actually, to put it into perspective, maybe one of my daughters um, comes home and I say, hi, honey, how was your day? And she says, oh, it wasn't good. And I say, that's too bad. Your mother will be home in five minutes. I've got to go to the gym. Um, I'm not proud of that, but that's how it plays out. Because you see, I am an emotional desert, and my wife is an emotional oasis. And so I want to let her thrive, and hopefully by the time I get home from the gym, everything will be well again. But you can imagine that's probably not the most healthy in a family relationship or in a marital relationship. And so um, I will say my wife and I have been through some marital counseling over the last couple of years. And you're probably thinking, I can see why. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so the first time we went to marital counseling, my uh, the counselor said to me, Kurt, what do you want out of this relationship? And I embarrassingly admit, I said, peace, calm, and not much work. Essentially, laziness. And what does laziness get us physically? A deterioration of muscles, bones, tissue. What does laziness get us in relationship? A deterioration of relationships and family and whatever else we are interacting with, right? And, and this came to light to me, and, and I learned from it. And I thought, oh my God, this is, the, this is the, pr the physical principle of training that I am now experiencing. So what, what do you do about it? Well, I needed to embrace discomfort and overload. So what does that look like? That We're talking emotions now. Well, that looks like talking and exploring and me sitting down and answering some really, really difficult questions. So questions like, you know, the, the counselor saying, Kurt, tell me what you were feeling whenever you had this encounter. Tell me what you were feeling whenever this happened. And I think for like four or five seconds, and I say, nothing. <laughs> I don't feel anything. <laughs> I'm a guy. <laughs> and he says, well, hold, hold on a second. You're also a human. And so this time, I think for four or five minutes, and I start to realize I'm actually feeling frustration. And I'm feeling maybe angry and probably a little bit sad. And I am wallowing in discomfort. And then he uh, kicks it up a notch. He says, now 
What I want you to do is I want you to share that with your spouse or share that with your, your daughters or your loved ones. And so we just went from discomfort to what do you think I'm thinking? Danger, right? I've never done this before. I'm thinking this is going to rip me apart. This is going to tear us apart. But thankfully, I had a professional along with me, right? The, I'm, a, I'm a physical therapist, so I push people and nudge people into discomfort all the time. Oh, Mrs. Jones, it's time to start doing some walking. I can't do that. Yes, you're, you're fine. He was doing that with me. It's time to start feeling these feelings and talk about them. And so whenever I shared them, my greatest fear, which was, I'm not enough, she won't like me, I, I'm not good at this, actually, that tearing apart actually brought us together. It strengthened us. We grew because, I, I, I want to say I embraced overload. I didn't embrace it. I went kicking and screaming, but I, I stepped into it. And I saw it happen over and over again. In fact, it made, uh, so I oversee eight faculty members and two administrative assistants in our department, and we made the decision, let's get a little bit more vulnerable in our workplace. And so I don't know if you've ever read this book before, but Dare to Lead by Brene Brown, it is great. Uh, but it is going to, she uses the term rumbling with vulnerability. Uh, like vulnerability is discomfort, if you, if you haven't figured that out. And so it is being authentic. It's having difficult conversations. It is using the term rumble because it's not easy. But as we start to do that, I'm seeing it over and over and over again that it is causing growth. And, and again, what made sense to me from a physical perspective I never realized could translate into other aspects of my being. So you're thinking, okay, good. You told me a couple things. I can do this. I can listen to a TED Talk, and I'm good, right? Well, I've got some bad news. So just like physical strength doesn't last your entire life just because you worked out tomorrow, your strength will peak between 25 and 30 years of age, I'm sorry to say, and then it starts to go down. But I've got some good news. If, if you engage in moderate to high level of activity, that decreases the decline. And so that's physically, what's that mean emotionally? Again, it's not just one episode one TED Talk on Saturday, February 24th. It is, it has to become, you've heard some other speakers talk about habits, uh, about changing the way that we interact. And so what does that look like on an emotional level? Uh, I'm still learning, but I'll tell you some things I'm learning, and that is engaging. So, hi honey, how are you? How was your day? Oh, it was horrible. Do you wanna sit down and chat about that? Let's run to Chick-fil-A quick. Or do you ever have the, you know, with your spouse, the, the morning fight, like, oh, you're both kind of grouchy, and I thought you were picking up this. No, you, you never listen to me. It's like, hey, let's circle back around at lunch. You want to go to Chick-fil-A? Like, <laughs> everything revolves around Chick-fil-A. <laughs> um, and again, use your strengths, Okay. Even, the, even this emotional desert is starting to become a little bit more fruitful, but my wife is an oasis, and so, hey, what ideas do you have? So we took a nine-hour car trip in the, over Christmas break, and she said, why don't we get some conversation cards? That's wonderful. So now we're not dialed into phones, and now we're answering questions on our trip like, what is your greatest fear in life? Or what, what is the best day you ever had? If, you could, if your personality was a color, what would it be, right? Things that wouldn't come out of my mind, I can tell you that much. But they stimulated growth. And so 
what, you know, again, at the end of the day, what can I get out of this? Well, they always tell us, you know, you should have three points. All right, I've got three points, okay? Embrace overload, embrace discomfort, and embrace vulnerability. Because that is going to cause growth. Whether we're talking physical, whether we're talking emotional, whether we're talking relational, if it's comfortable, probably not a lot of growth going on. And so the last thing that has kind of shown me about growth is, I always thought growth was an outcome. I learned it was a process. I thought, so this is me 30 years ago, high school senior. I was pretty immature and pretty naive, but I thought at one point when I get the title, when I get the position, when I get on the TED Talk stage, who knows, that will be it. And I've realized it's not just about that. It's the process, it is everything in between because that is where the growth is happening. That is where the overload is taking place. And so I would encourage you, embrace overload in your life and know that you're gonna be in the process and enjoy the process because believe me, the benefits are well worth it. Thank you.